Yeah, you know, toilets, you know, again, surfers like a primitive. They just as soon go in the bush, and an awful lot of them do. Uh, but we, because of the, the visitation for this mile and a half stretch of beach total, uh, walk in coming in uh, to the north in what's called upper trestles, walk in coming from the south, and then the 100,000 crossing here. The total annual attendance in this mile and a half stretch is about 300,000 people a year. Uh, we were obligated to put toilets down here. We have 10 chemical toilets spotted around uh, Strategic. Uh, would a nice composting, uh, you know, modern, you know, environmentally sound toilet be desirable? I say yes. Uh, All right. Uh, so, so you have you have portables now, right? The, That's it. Portable chemical they're, toilets. And they're kind of scattered along here. Yep. So I guess the question I have is, are having multiple small ones better than one central one in terms yes. of users and yeah, yeah. Because, because, because they, people they, don't want to walk. No. There are actually seven distinct surfing spots in this uh, mile and a half, and not everybody goes to that place. That's called, that's kind of like the gladiator pit. You got to be a darn good surfer to hold your own out there. Uh, but all through this area, there are people that. That is their little zone, so we have the toilets located near where these concentrations of, of folks are. Uh, you know, from a standpoint of overall park management, yes, it would be desirable to have uh, improved you know, stations. Uh, they would still have to be some type of a, a pit toilet that got service you know, out in this remote location. Um, there's no water out, out here on the beach. Uh, you know, even the suggestion of putting bicycle racks out there a tremendous number of these people ride their bikes down this trail and they don't want bicycle racks. They do not want improvements. They, when they are here, when you're out here, you, know, and you can shut everything out. You can shut out the first 12 million people right there or Interstate 5 because it's people masked by the uh, vegetation. And yeah, you hear the train, but uh, you know, it's kind of the nostalgia of, okay, you know, we're, we're out in the wilderness. But truly, I call this the wilderness, right at the edge of civilization. And many of the uh, users want to retain that. So, you know, the message is, you know, keeping the essence of the park experience. Yeah, I mean, it's it's sacred ground for a lot of reasons, and the, the surfers uh, uh, they can get mobilized as they, they did during the toll road uh, uh, days. And this is not something that should be a catalyst. Uh, that uh, it is a um, in any way antagonistic to that experience or what this park is about. So, uh, again, back to you know, kind of a balance between using the, the natural materials and then wherever our transitions are, you know, doing it with an aesthetic that uh, keeps a uh, footprint that everybody will hopefully uh, realize captures the harm. Yeah. Uh, they're right away. So here's an example of an at-grade pedestrian crossing in a state park in San Clemente, fencing adjacent to it so that you can only cross right here. Big ugly sign, basically the same one that's designed for cars, just cropped off shorter. And it's a